Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Michelle. So here we have the negative snake game task cards. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, them? absolutely. And the negative snake game uh, really is gets has its roots in three to six. So I was asking you, like, how is it used? Uh, is it more sensorial at the three to six year old level? Um, yeah. So the three to six classroom, it's being used by the students to mostly count forwards and backwards and focusing on what is the positive numbers and negative numbers and getting them familiar with that with what that is and just having them have a strong concept of of that right yeah so like in in an, in an elementary classroom uh it's nice because we're going to use the same materials so it's going to be familiar to the child they, they they see it especially those early days in lower elementary where they're just sort of like getting their their feet wet there they used to be the big men and women on campus when they were five, yeah. they're the big older ones, and now they're suddenly, now they're a first grader, now these are big seven. So it's nice for them to see familiar materials. I would say there's a little bit of a change in focus, though, for the negative snake game uh, when we move into the elementary years. Now we're really looking at the combinations. At the same time that the child is doing this work, they're working with golden beads, they're working with the stamp game, but they're also doing all the memorization works where they're just learning, all right, six plus seven is 13, four plus three is seven, uh, all those. And so they're gonna look at this and it'll be a familiar material, but like I say, when the teacher presents it, uh, they're gonna be looking at it in like more and more in combination. So these are task cards, and like any task card or command card, you're looking for this to be a work that comes after the physical presentation that the teacher has given. So it's, it's not a starting point. This is more like an ending point um, for them. It supplies work for them to do after they have gotten the, the presentation. Uh, they're, because they, we want them to be independent, the answers are always written on the back. And in this case, the answer is actually showing the physical chain. So the child can compare what they've got on their mat to actually what they've got on the back of, uh, on the, back of, the, of the card. Uh, and so, uh, again, this sort of fills that niche where, like, what do I do with it from now on? And how can I give, as a teacher, you want to make sure that the, at least the initial snakes that they're doing, you've got a little bit more control over so you know that they're gonna, not going to run into like huge negative numbers right away, which can be frustrating for the child uh, and can lead them to have like, a negative, right? Yes. You don't want to have a negative feeling towards the work. Right. So uh, this set here uh, is going to start to really just identifying the first section of it. It goes from more uh, of a simple to more complex, and it starts with just identifying. We got a lot of with a lot of different parts here. Uh, it even comes with a control chart here that shows you what are the different parts. So you know these are going to be our positive integers, our positive placeholders, our positive ten bars, and then all the negative uh, places as, as well. They've done the pod. We're assuming they're doing the positive snake game at uh, you know at the same time. So it goes from there, which is just identifying the different ones, and then it starts very very simply because again, uh, the child working with us while we're giving the presentation, we can do longer ones, but but we're there. We're right. We're right there behind them. If our expectation is that they're going to be doing this on their own, we want to make sure that they're hit with a lot of success. So so these these first ones are small combinations, a quick answer, hey, I got it right, the, it, it matches that, that layout, I can move on. And then as they go through them, and there are a lot of cards here, so there's a lot of, uh, of work that the child can be done here, and it hits that quantitative part of six to nine year olds. They love like, look at all these cards that I do, uh, that I did. And then it's gonna move on to longer and longer snakes. But again, these are all of the different snakes that you can be confident that they're gonna give an answer that's gonna be like well within the, the child's range to be able to do. Uh, and I would say, with the, especially with the negative snake game, um, I, you'd agree with me, like if our answer is a positive answer, that's a little bit easier for yes. the child, right? Yes. Uh, and so these last ones are, the, in my classroom we always called them the spicy ones. The spicy yes. ones just meant like they were gonna be a little bit hotter, they were gonna yeah. be a little harder to do. And so the last ones there are gonna be the ones that uh, any answer, so they're gonna have negative answers uh, there uh, as, as well. So yeah, that's the negative snake game task cards. Okay, thank you so much, Rob.